Manually adjusting gears when you're in an automatic transmission, whether that's a car, truck, or SUV, is a very straightforward process. In this video, I'm gonna show you how the paddle shifters work, when you wanna use the paddle shifters, manual mode, and some questions that you might have, but you're too embarrassed to ask. So, the setup is gonna depend on the car that you're in, but typically, you're gonna find the minus on the left-hand side with the plus on the right-hand side. Some cars are gonna have a manual mode that you can drop down into, and other ones are gonna have the option of sliding over in order to increase or decrease gears that way. Trucks are typically gonna have the plus and minus on the actual gear shift itself. So the way that it looks is going to depend on the car that you're in, but it functions the exact same way. So minus is gonna be on the left-hand side, and there are a few different scenarios that you're gonna to wanna to use it. If you wanna rely on engine braking, or if you need some quick speed to pass grandma because she's going too slow on the highway that's when you're gonna use the minus. The downhill brake one is very useful. So if you wanted to rely on engine braking instead of wearing out your brake pads. So what you're gonna do is if you're going downhill or if you need to slow down, you're gonna hit the minus button once at a time in order to slow yourself down. Where that really comes into play, I'll give you a scenario. Let's say if your brakes have failed, then you need to slow the vehicle down. People freak out, but if you've got a vehicle that's got paddle shifters or manual shift mode, just start dropping, you're essentially downshifting. I was in a manual vehicle recently where the brakes did fail and I was able to downshift. Working in an automatic transmission is the exact same way. So if your brakes have failed, you can press the minus button in order to slow the vehicle down. And like I said, that's also useful for downhill braking. So if you're going downhill, steep grades, rather than wearing out your brake pads, just rely on engine braking in order to be able to slow yourself down that way. Plus, on the other hand, is gonna let you increase the gear that you're in. So there are two different things that you wanna worry about there, and that's whether you're redlining or you can short shift. So as you're driving, I'll give you some real world driving examples too as we go, but you've got your red line here. So red line is at about 7,500 RPM inside of this Mustang. So when you hit that 7,500, that's kind of the max point when you should be hitting the plus button there in order to increase the gear that you're in. You can also short shift where you essentially change your gear before the red line. So there's a few things to consider there. You wanna change gears when you're at the red line. That's in order to make sure that you're not prematurely wearing the engine down. But if you let your vehicle redline, you're using more gas. So the reason why you would want a plus or short shift when you don't hit redline is to essentially save on fuel economy. It's not a big difference, but it definitely makes a difference. Some cars are gonna have a sport mode. So this one does definitely have a sport mode available. Sport mode holds onto the RPMs a little bit longer. So rather than your normal drive mode where a shift point might be, let's say 2000 or 3000 RPM, in a sport mode, it might be four, five or 6,000 RPM when the vehicle's brain or the ECU is essentially going to automatically change gears. So you could change gears out yourself if you want to in an automatic, or you could use paddle shifters. Some vehicles also do have a manual mode. So the manual mode gives you greater control over the shift points because even if you're not in the manual mode, let's say if you're just driving regular, regular paddle shifters, if you're riding the red line a little bit too long, eventually the car will automatically change gears for you without you doing it. It's gonna shoot you up to the necessary gear. And that's to protect what's going on with the mechanical components of the vehicle and to protect the transmission. So the vehicle will automatically adjust gears out even if you're in that M mode. Where the M mode really comes into play is in snowy conditions because automatic transmissions, these things are automatically gonna shift for you. So if you're in a snowy condition and you're trying to rock the car out because you're stuck, the downside there is that you're not gonna be able to get your RPMs up high enough to give yourself enough launch to get forward. So if you're ever in snowy conditions and you're stuck, you're gonna drop yourself into that M mode, so that manual mode instead. And that's gonna give you greater control over what gear the vehicle's in. When do you actually shift up? That's gonna depend on a few things. Like if you're racing, you're obviously gonna to wanna to get yourself close to red line before you shift. If you want better fuel economy, you're gonna to wanna to shift at a lower point. Something like 3,500 RPM is usually a, sh a safe shift point. If you've ever driven a manual transmission, you can hear when you need to shift. In most cars, it's between 3,500 and 4,000 RPM. If you want better fuel economy, you're gonna to wanna to shift lower, like two to 3,000 RPM. It's just not necessary. You can shift a little bit higher you'll hear it because it's almost gonna sound like a little bit of a whine. As the RPM gauge starts to spool up, you're gonna hear it and you'll know that you need to shift. But like I said, typical rule of thumb, you wanna keep yourself in that like 3,500-ish RPM range. Can you upshift or downshift using the paddle shifters while you're using the gas or the brake? Yes, but it's going to depend. So I'll give you a few scenarios here. 
if you're on the highway, you're accelerating, you can keep your foot on the accelerator and you can press the plus button there in order to be able to change gears out to a higher gear. If you're wanting to pass somebody, keep your foot on the accelerator and then you can hit the minus button in order to decrease gears to give you a nice amount of launch to get yourself in front of that person. So rule of thumb with the accelerator, if you're trying to speed up, you could keep on pressing the accelerator or the gas pedal while you're pressing the plus or the minus button, no problem. The brake on the other hand is close to the exact opposite. So if you're slowing down, you don't wanna be hitting the plus button because you're increasing gear. So that just doesn't make sense. But if you're braking, then you wanna hit the brake and you can also hit the minus button there to slow yourself down a little bit more rapidly. But if you're relying on engine braking, take your foot off the brake and then just use the minus button in order to slow yourself down that way instead. So yes, you can use the gas or the brake with the paddle shifters if you want to, but it doesn't make sense in all scenarios. So wrapping it up in a nutshell before we get to the live example. This is gonna slow you down or it's gonna let you drop down gears in order to give you some nice launch to get in front of people. Plus is going to let you increase gears and you can either wait until the red line to shift or you can shift short shift by shifting at a lower point. So like, three, like I said, 3,500 RPM typically is gonna be a safe bet. Using the gas and the brake is possible. Gas, you can keep your foot on the accelerator there and you can increase gears that way or you can decrease gears to give yourself some nice launch forward. Braking, you can use at any point in time. And you could ideally, like you don't want to, like I said, hit the brake with that plus, but you can hit the brake with the minus for added brake control. The manual mode is useful across the board. Most useful if you're going to be getting out of snowy conditions. So you're going to drop yourself in a manual, keep yourself in a low gear to rev yourself up, and then kind of go plus and minus as necessary to kind of like rock the car back and forward in order to get yourself out of a snowy situation. So that's the basics there. Now I'm gonna take you on the road in order to give you some real world examples of everything we just covered off. So along the very bottom, you can see either drive mode versus manual mode. So two different things to consider here. With regular drive mode, as I start to use the paddle shifters, if it's too low of a gear and I'm getting too close to that midline point, the vehicle's gonna automatically change gears. It might jump two, three gears for me. Versus in the manual mode, it's gonna let you hang on to that RPM a little bit higher for longer in comparison. It'll still eventually shift to protect the transmission, but you can hold onto that RPM a little bit longer. And you can shift between the drive versus the manual mode as you're driving here as well. So I'm gonna start off with the drive, but watch this. So I didn't shift. Okay, and look at this, it's in gear five. So I literally didn't shift at all there. It went from first to fifth pretty quickly. But the other side of it, when I go to drive, or when I go to the manual mode instead, watch this. So live example there, when you're in the manual mode, you're gonna be able to rev up the RPMs a lot higher before the vehicle either eventually shifts or you shift out yourself. As I was braking there, I was also downshifting as I went. So you don't have to downshift, but I'm gonna show you another example here. So I'm gonna be in the manual mode. Let's get to let's say third gear, watch this. Okay, third gear, and now I'm gonna start slowing down. So even if you're in the manual mode, it automatically is gonna drop you to a safe gear as you go. And it's the same thing with the regular drive mode too. So drive mode and gear three, gear four, and let's start slowing down. You can see there, in first gear. And that's how you use paddle shifters or manual shifting inside of cars, trucks, or SUVs with automatic transmissions. If you have any questions, drop down in the comment section below and let me know. But you can find a walkthrough on this Mustang, a bunch of Ford Lincoln vehicles, etc. down in the description or on this channel. If you found it useful, thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And until I see you next time, take care. Eventually the vehicle still will shift in order to protect itself. Ooh, old school Mustang. Nice. <laughs> Squirrel, you just have to appreciate nice things when you see them. But where was I?